Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. Till a few years ago, the Thapar Group company Greaves Cotton was like a mainstream any other auto ancillary company which used to make those diesel engines for companies like Piaggio and Atul. It also had a farm equipment business. But in the last few years, it seems to have rediscovered itself quite completely from uh, from an auto ancillary company, diesel engine manufacturer, to a fuel agnostic solutions provider. And it even pivoted from being a largely B2B player to a B2C uh, company. To talk about this transition and this uh, fairly significant transformation which is underway with a focus on e-mobility, I have with me the chairman of Greaves, Greaves Cotton, Karan Thapur. Karan, it's great to see you and thank you very much uh, for joining me today. Thank you, Udayan, for inviting me. Great. As I was saying, when, when did that, this transition of Greaves Cotton start? Uh, because, uh, you know, you seem to have rediscovered yourself quite completely and that process is still underway. At what point did you tell yourself that I'm not just going to be a, a B2B diesel engine manufacturer, but I want to up my game and get into the e-mobility space in a big way? The journey began in 2016 uh, when we were discussing in the board and with the top management team how we could uh, repurpose the company and what we should do uh, you know in order to achieve that so i would say the journey began that year mm. what was the driving point i mean did you feel that you had to use your expertise to tap into the looming e-mobility revolution or was it a move towards becoming a more of a B2C company. What was the driving force behind this transition plan? Well, it was fairly clear to us uh, that, uh, you know, a only fossil fuel based solution for powertrains uh, was not going to be, uh, you know, <clears throat> sustainable for the longer term. And in our business, uh, you know, it takes time to sort of achieve uh, the position that we had achieved with uh, the diesel powertrain, especially for in the low uh, light commercial vehicles, three wheeler and small four wheeler. Mm -hmm. And uh, we felt that the way f uh, for the future was electric. And that's when we began discussing how to get into it. Uh, along the way, uh, once uh, we did take the plunge into uh, the electric uh, mobility area, uh, we decided that uh, we should go in uh, as a product rather than only as uh, the power train, which had been our expertise all along. Mm. That's a significant shift because, you know, not many component manufacturers go on to become the brand themselves. Uh, but today what you're doing is this series of product launches that we're seeing from Reeves Cotton. There seems to be a complete realignment of purpose uh, that we are not going to be a component manufacturer for the end product which somebody else will make. Is it an easy transition to make to be from a component player to actually a finished product vehicle manufacturer? It is not easy over there. Uh, it, uh, there are enormous challenges. And I think one of the key challenges uh, is getting the people, the management of a very old legacy business, you know, Greaves Cotton has been around for over 160 years. To get them to think uh, and act differently is a challenge. Mm. But you seem to have overcome the challenge by getting your current vice chairman, who has been very instrumental and key to your plans, right? Yes, uh, Nagesh is leading our vision, um, the board's vision for electric mobility. Um, he is very, uh, he has a very clear idea of uh, where we should be going, a lot of experience, but we must understand, uh, at least we do uh, at the board, that we are very uh, early in our journey and there's a very long road ahead. Mm. That's an interesting point because, uh, you know, a lot of people do say that there is a lot of excitement about this electric vehicle game, but the legacy manufacturers almost scoff at it saying, 
you're too early into it. I mean, India is going to be a, a fossil fuel destination for a very long time. And this road towards uh, the transformation towards electric will take much longer than some of these electric vehicle manufacturers suggest. What's your answer to that? Market penetration of uh, electric uh, vehicles uh, is definitely a challenge. No question about that. It's for two wheelers. It's currently hovering between four and five percent for four wheelers and even for three wheelers. It's quite negligible. So, yes, at today's, uh, uh, you know, scenario, it, it seems fairly insignificant. But I think that the world's investments into the entire area of electric mobility is now in the trillions of dollars. And a lot of that uh, work and money invested is revealing itself in ever-changing, more efficient uh, production of components, of batteries, of motors, of all the enablers for electric vehicles. So uh, it's just a matter of time when these become competitive on their own, in their own right. Uh, in several applications, the total cost of ownership of an electric vehicle is already better than uh, that of uh, an IC engine, particularly in small payload applications. And, and this trend is going to continue. Mm. Now, when uh, electric vehicles reach a, a much higher and significant uh, degree of uh, market penetration, those projections keep varying. I, I keep hearing all sorts of uh, uh, numbers and predictions. I don't have a particular crystal ball. I only clear that there is a particular direction in which the world is going and we are going to be part of that journey. Mm. You spoke about uh, electric vehicles attracting much of the global investment and that is true. And you've attracted some part of that as well. Uh, in fact, there was great excitement in the market recently, uh, last year, when uh, the Abdul Latif Jamil Foundation invested a significant amount of money in your electric venture. Would you say that that was a kind of a turning point in your aspirations? Well, we went out to raise money uh, for, for our electric vehicle business because we want to expand, we want to bring in new technologies, we want to build brand, etc., uh, etc. Et and uh, we found uh, Abdul Latif Jamil a very keen uh, investor in this electric mobility space. Uh, they had invested very early in a well-known uh, U.S. startup called Rivian and uh, were looking for opportunities. We are very uh, proud and uh, <clears throat> very thrilled that they selected Reeves Cotton as the company to invest with. Mm. Would you solicit even greater investment from them going forward? I mean, what's the plan? What's the ideal ownership mix between you and the Jamil family in uh, your electric mobility company? Well, Greaves, uh, Greaves Electric Mobility continues to be a subsidiary of Greaves Cotton. Uh, depending upon the needs of capital, uh, you know, we will continue to go to the market. And, uh, uh, you know, there is always uh, different options of raising that money. And we will explore uh, as and when we need uh, the money. Mm. It's not just the money though, Karan, because you know, aligning with some of these global investors gives you the opportunity or the option of aligning with, you, uh, aligning with some of the larger players in the electric mobility space in the Western world. Like you spoke about the Jamil family's interest in Rivian. And uh, it's, it's no secret that at some point, electric mobility companies will need to work on, say, batteries and other components, uh, which are crucial in the success of uh, all e-mobility companies. Do you see that possibility now with Jamil as an investor that they may connect you to other companies in the West who you can partner with? 
we are very happy to be connected uh, to anybody that is relevant to our business model. And the Jamil uh, family has some connections, which, uh, you know, they are ready to share with us, uh, you know, but we are uh, looking out for uh, technology of all kinds, enabling a better, more efficient, more cost, uh, uh, you know, productive uh, electric vehicle on our own as well. Uh, as you know, or you may have uh, recently read that Cleves Cotton has just signed an agreement with a small uh, company in the UK which makes excellent uh, motors and the design of motors is excellent. And we're expecting to launch those products sometime later this year. Now, uh, there are a number of other people we are talking to. Um, and, I, and that journey will continue because as I said earlier, the technology is evolving and uh, we cannot afford to be complacent. Mm. Your ambition uh, uh, in the two-wheeler space, electric two-wheeler space is, is getting even more pronounced because the kind of products that you showcased recently, some of these high-speed scooters seem to be technologically much more superior compared to the options that you were unveiling earlier. In fact, some of the price points are here are more than a lakh of rupees. Uh, how, what is the kind of price level the mark, this market can take, you feel? Price levels that have already been set by the IC engine based uh, vehicles, scooters and motorcycles. So it, it's hard to go beyond that price point for the present. But I think as consumers get more and more comfortable with electric vehicles, uh, they will realize that it occupies its own space and it is very unique. I, uh, I would urge anybody uh, who has tried or uses an IC engine vehicle to try an electric vehicle and experience the difference. Uh, it is completely different. Uh, the ease, the lack of vibration, the smoothness of the ride, it's a whole new experience and we are definitely attracting a whole new class of customer or new type of customer uh, to this, uh, you know, to this vehicle. Have you driven one yourself, Karan? Uh, because I hear, I hear you're a keen polo enthusiast yourself. Oh. I mean, how does it compare to riding a horse or thoroughbred? <laughs> The electric vehicle is very smooth, no bucking and uh, uh, like the polar body. How do you see competition in this space? Because, you know, while you've got investment in and you're launching products and you've got a good team, but there are significant competitors like Kinetic, uh, like Ola, even the incumbent players, uh, legacy fuel players like Bajaj Auto. Uh, how do you see yourself locking horns with them? Well, it's a competitive marketplace. Uh, there is the, the, the companies you mentioned and more coming in all the time. Uh, we have a, a slight early mover advantage and hopefully uh, we will do what it takes uh, to maintain that advantage. I don't think uh, any legacy player has any particular advantage in this field and as I said it is a completely different product altogether uh, it needs uh, a different outlook so uh, you know an early mover advantage definitely will benefit us in the long term we, we will we're learning all the time hmm. any market share targets that you have because I I believe that Ampere, the company that you bought and through which you're launching many products, has about a 12-13% share in the market. Uh, would, you be, uh, would you be confident of maintaining that? Would you be content with having that kind of a share eventually as this market uh, unfolds and expands? Yes, we have targeted a 15% market share and uh, we're close. We're about 13% uh, 
as you said, 12, 13% now. And we are confident that we can maintain that share. Mm. What about other variant, product variants like e three wheelers or e rickshaws? Uh, what kind of uh, ambitions do you have there, and how big is that market? I mean, how big as part of your e mobility business could those products be? Well, the three wheeler market is already quite large. It is being addressed through, uh, on the electric side, it is being addressed through two completely different vehicles. One is what we call loosely the electric rickshaw, which is L3. And then there is the electric auto, which is uh, L5. One is, of course, for uh, smaller payloads. Uh, those vehicles are unregulated. And we do have a, a small presence in that market yet. I mean, uh, currently, uh, through a company called Bestway. And uh, on the auto side, the L5 side, we have our presence through another company called MLR Auto. And uh, that market will grow. It has different challenges for moving both passengers and cargo. And we are in the process of addressing those challenges. I expect uh, good momentum in the current year. Hmm. The other interesting thing, as I was alluding to earlier, uh, Karan, is this move towards being a consumer-facing company. I mean, that's not something every auto component manufacturer manages to achieve. But you, you seem to be very intent and keen on expanding your retail store presence. I mean, what's, what are the plans on that retail front? Well, you know, any um, automobile company uh, needs uh, an aftermarket, both in terms of sales of spares and service. And we we recognize that uh, from the outset. And our Greaves Automart, our Greaves Retail effort is all geared towards that. And uh, in fact, the EV Automart that we have is not only selling Greaves electric mobilities products, I mean, Ampere and the rest. It sells other people's products as well. The whole idea is to get the EV culture around the country. Hmm. Where does all this leave your old business, the legacy business that you have, those diesel engines that you would sell to, uh, to the likes of Piaggio, or your uh, gen sets, the pump sets, the tillers. Uh, uh, are you defocusing on that business or it just continues to move as it was? So the Reeves Cotton continues to sell its uh, diesel engines and CNG engines uh, and petrol engines for different applications, both auto and uh, non-auto. Uh, of course, the business is much smaller than it was uh, earlier, uh, but uh, it's still there. And, um, you know, it's started coming back post-COVID. And now that shared mobility is back again in full swing. Uh, but uh, it's definitely smaller than before. We continue to invest to make sure that we are uh, in compliance with all uh, the environment uh, emission norms. And our customers still rely on us to provide the pathway. Mm. So five years out, will Greaves Cotton look very different uh, current to what it is now, where your new investments and your new businesses will become much larger even in terms of a revenue share, uh, and maybe the business that was your bread and butter 10 years ago would become even smaller? Uh, well, <clears throat> There is definitely a much higher growth momentum currently in the electric mobility side of the business. There's no doubt about that. But Reeves Cotton, uh, the legacy business, is itself investing in the electric power train and making components there. So that business will grow uh, as well. Uh, so, yes, the B2B legacy side of the business will be or much smaller for the Greaves group as a whole, but it will be a very significant business nonetheless. Well, good luck with your aspirations, Karan. It was great talking to you today, and thank you very much uh, for your time.
Thank you, Udayan. Pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.